let me dive into the strategies to remedy depression. And then I'll take some questions and I'm going to tell you a story and we'll wrap up after that. After a period of intense depression, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to decide if you want to move on with life and whether or not whether or not the pain and the grief of the past have been resolved. You've got to decide if you're going to move on, even if the, the situation hasn't been resolved. Even if you haven't seen justice, even if there wasn't one that was an apology, even if you have regrets, even if you're embarrassed, even if you murdered someone, even if you had an abortion, even if you were sexually abused, even if you cheated on your spouse, at some point, no matter what the circumstances, you have to make the decision, am I going to move forward or not? And too often we bury ourselves in activity to keep our minds occupied. Unfortunately, busyness isn't going to get rid of our pain. Eventually, we're going to have to quiet ourselves before God and let him deal with what we've been stuffing in our hearts. And in Luke 10, we read the story of Mary and Martha. What is the one needful thing that Jesus is referring to in the scripture? If you haven't read the story, open up your Bible to Luke 10, verses 38 to 42. Read the story of Mary and Martha. <clears throat> and Martha's in a snit. She's got a bad attitude and she's grouchy. And she wants Jesus to know it and she wants Jesus to get it straightened out for her. And Jesus is saying, hey, Martha, there's only one thing that's needful right now. You're worried about a lot of things, but there's only one thing that you need to be focusing on right now. When you're feeling overwhelmed, discouraged, <clears throat> useless, and hopeless, what do you do? Who do you talk to? Where do you go? If you or a loved one is struggling with severe depression or suicidal thoughts, please reach out and tell someone. Don't try to face this on your own. Isolation is one of Satan's most powerful strategies against God's children. Depression is a common yet very treatable condition. Unfortunately, studies show that only a fifth of those who are depressed will actually seek help. Of those who do reach out for help, more than 80% report feeling better in just a few weeks. And sadly, depression has been found to be the common link in over two thirds of suicides every year. Staying active and doing things for others are important parts of healing from depression, but they're not that important if they're taking away time with God. So here are some simple and practical steps designed to bring you freedom from depression. Number one, you need to be intentional about restoring intimacy with God and trusted believers. The Bible says, and I'm not sure where it is, but we can find it. I believe it's Colossians, but that we're to be washed daily by the cleansing of the water of the word. If you want to get the yuck of the day off you, you've got to be in the word. And I can feel it if I haven't been in the word enough because I carry things with me. Make time each day for prayer and reflection. Jesus gave a warning to the church in Matthew 24 when he's talking about how to know when it's the end times. And he says, because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many is going to grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And again, in Revelation 2, he warns to the church, I have this against you that you've abandoned your first love. It's time to get back to our first love. And if you've never known your first love, then let me introduce you to him. And if you don't have a Bible, let me know and I'll get you one. Because that's your love letter from the father to you. Number two, engage in the spiritual disciplines of prayer, meditation, worship, thanksgiving, and then believe what you read. Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. 
There's the Bible summary on it. Anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Number three, focus on the needs of someone other than yourself. Not out of a sense of duty and obligation, but out of a sense of, I want to really care for someone and I want to do something for someone. Get out of your own head for a while. Do something for someone else with no expectation that you're going to get it, uh, a reciprocity or get something out of it. When you do things for somebody, it's not about meeting your needs. It's to do it with no expectations. Self-focus and self-absorption are a big part of the problem of depression. Isaiah 58 promises us, Isaiah 58, 10, that if we spend ourselves on behalf of the hungry and we take care of the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. When we start taking care of other people, the light comes upon us. It's the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. And your darkness will become like the noonday sun, as bright as the noonday. Number four, maintain appropriate self-care. Discipline yourself in the areas of physical exercise, nutrition, and sleep. Pursue regular medical care and evaluation. Matthew 11, Jesus is speaking in verses 28 and 30. He says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me because I'm gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take care of yourself. Sometimes the best thing you can do for the Lord is go eat a good meal and go to bed at a decent hour. And that's all he wants from you this day. Number five, be sure to seek spiritual guidance. Develop and utilize spiritual supports for purposes of accountability and mentoring. Community and intimacy with others are a necessary part of the Christian life. First Thessalonians 5.11 tells us that we're to encourage one another and build one another up. You can't do that in isolation. Hebrews 10.25 tells us that we're not to give up meeting together like some do. But we're to encourage one another even more as we see the day approaching. There are some battles in life that are just too difficult to face alone, and depression is one of them. And by now, I hope you're seeing under strategies, what, no matter what emotion we're talking about, the strategies are pretty much the same. 